Today, we're tackling a feature that's in nearly every new car, but hardly ever questioned, stop-start systems. Manufacturers claim it's a brilliant innovation that saves fuel and reduces emissions. The idea is simple. When you stop at a red light, your engine shuts off. When you press the gas, it starts back up. Sounds like a smart way to improve efficiency, right? Well, not so fast. What if I told you this system might be doing more harm than good? Stick with me, because we're about to break it all down. Hidden wear and tear. What they won't tell you. Car companies assure us that modern cars have reinforced starters and advanced batteries to handle the extra strain. That's true, but it's only half the story. One, oil pressure matters more than you think. Engines rely on oil circulation to reduce friction and prevent damage. Every time your engine shuts off, oil pressure drops to zero. When it restarts, there's a brief moment where critical parts are moving without full lubrication. In a normal car, this only happens once or twice a day, when you start in the morning and maybe after work. With stop-start, dozens of times per trip, turbocharged engines suffer the most. Turbos rely on hot oil for cooling, and repeatedly cutting off that flow can lead to premature wear, clogged oil passages, and even turbo failure. Two, your battery and starter take a beating. Yes, stop-start cars use AGM batteries and heavier-duty starters, but here's the reality. AGM batteries cost twice as much as regular ones. They don't last twice as long. The constant restarting puts extra strain on the starter motor, leading to earlier replacements. A standard battery might cost $100 to $150, but an AGM battery? $250 to $400. If it fails sooner than expected, there goes your fuel savings. The everyday annoyances of stop-start. It's not just wear and tear, you'll feel the downsides every time you drive. 1. That awkward restart lag. Picture this, you're at a red light. It turns green. You press the gas, and wait, just a fraction of a second longer than you'd like. That delay. That's stop-start at work. In newer cars, the lag is minimal, but in older or budget models, it's noticeable. And in tight traffic, that split-second hesitation can be frustrating, or even dangerous when making quick turns. 2. Car air conditioning systems problem. You'll feel this in the summer. Most car air conditioning systems run off the engine. So when the engine shuts off, so does your cold air. Yes, some high-end cars have electric compressors to keep car air conditioning systems running, but most don't. Imagine sitting in summer traffic, windows rolled up, sun beating down, and suddenly your car stops cooling. All to save a few cents on fuel. Does it really save you money? Let's do the math. The big selling point of stop-start is better fuel economy. Studies show it can improve city MPG by about 10%. Sounds good, but let's break it down. If your car gets 30 MPG and you drive 10,000 miles in the city per year, at $4 per gallon, you save about $133 per year. But here's the problem. An AGM battery costs anywhere between $250 and $400. A starter replacement costs between $400 and $600. If your engine wears out faster due to oil pressure issues, well, that's a multi-thousand dollar problem. So, in the long run, are you really saving money? Not really. Should you disable it? Here's my advice. If your car has stop-start, here's what you can do. Check if it can be turned off permanently. Some cars let you disable it once and forget about it, while others reset it every time you restart the car. Use it strategically. If you're stuck in heavy traffic, it might help a bit. But for short stops or hot weather, turn it off and save yourself the hassle. Budget for long-term costs. If you keep cars for years, plan for more expensive batteries, starters, and frequent oil changes. Final verdict. Who really wins? Stop-start isn't a scam, but it's also not the game-changer it's made out to be. The truth is, it's more about helping car manufacturers meet government emissions targets than actually benefiting drivers. At the end of the day, you're the one footing the bill for the fuel savings. So next time you start your car, ask yourself, is stop start really worth it? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more honest car advice. Drive safe, and I'll see you in the next one.